excited to welcome you to our tour today. For those of you who don't know me very well, my name is Kelsey and I am originally from Chicago. And my husband and I moved to Valencia, Spain last February. We're loving it, it's beautiful. And I have been taking quite a few trips lately. So this is one of the beautiful places that I am so excited to bring you to. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the first part in our Pisa series. Pisa, a city nestled in the heart of Tuscany, Italy, is renowned for its iconic leaning tower that has captured the imagination of travelers for centuries. Steeped in history, Pisa flourished as a powerful maritime republic during the Middle Ages, contributing to its wealth and cultural influence. The Cathedral Square, or Piazza dei Miracoli, houses Pisa's most famous landmark, including the Leaning Tower, the Cathedral, and the Baptistry, creating a harmonious ensemble that reflects the city's architectural brilliance. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, originally designated as a freestanding bell tower for the cathedral, owes its distinctive tilt to unstable ground conditions. Despite its unintended lean, the tower became a symbol of Italy's architectural prowess and resilience. Pisa's rich history extends beyond its architectural wonders, encompassing its role as a significant trade hub, a center for learning, and a city that has weathered the tides of time with grace and charm. As we delve into the story of Pisa, we unravel the layers of its past, revealing a city that continues to stand as a testament to Italy's enduring cultural and historical legacy. Now, because we explore so many different locations of Italy on my channel, Explore with Kelsey, let me tell you a little bit about Italy's geography. It is as diverse as Italy's cultural heritage. Offering a stunning variety of landscapes that captivate visitors from around the world, Italy is located in southern Europe. It is a boot-shaped peninsula that extends into the Mediterranean Sea with its iconic shape influenced by the Alps from the north and the Apennine Mountains running down its spine. The country is bordered by France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia to the north, and it shares its maritime borders with Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, and Greece to the east. Italy's geography encompasses a wide range of terrain, including fertile plains, rugged coastlines, rolling hills, and towering mountains. The northern regions are characterized by the majestic peaks of the Alps, which offer spectacular scenery and excellent skiing opportunities in places like the Dolmites and the Aosta Valley. As one travels southward, the landscape transitions to the gentle slopes of the Apennines, which stretch the length of the Italian peninsula, providing fertile land for agriculture and vineyards. Along the coastlines, Italy boasts picturesque beaches, charming seaside towns, and rugged cliffs that overlook the crystal clear waters of the Mediterranean Sea. From the vineyards of Tuscany to the lemon groves of the Amalfi Coast and the olive orchards of Puglia, Italy's geography plays a vital role in shaping its rich cultural heritage and culinary traditions. What's your favorite part of Italy? Let me know in the comments below. As we explore, let me tell you some fun facts about this beautiful country. Italy is home to the iconic Colosseum, where ancient Romans enjoyed spectacles such as gladiator contests and mock sea battles. This massive amphitheater, completed in the year 80, can hold up to 80,000 spectators. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is part of the Piazza dei Miracoli in Pisa, started leaning during its construction due to unstable soil. Completed in the year 1372, this architectural marvel attracts millions of visitors every year and is only supposed to remain stable for the next 200 years. Go see it while you can! <laughs> Italy has given the world some notable inventions as well, including the piano, eyeglasses, the first recorded recipe for ice cream. These innovations have left a lasting impact on music, vision, and everyone's favorite frozen treat. The world's oldest university, the University of Bologna, founded in the year 1088, is recognized as the world's oldest university. It has a rich history of academic excellence and has played a crucial role in the development of higher education. 
Vatican City. An independent city-state surrounded by Rome, Vatican City is the smallest country in the world. It is the spiritual and administrative center of the Roman Catholic Church, and St. Peter's Basilica and the Sistine Chapel are located within its borders. The birthplace of pizza. Naples is widely re regarded as the birthplace of pizza. The margarita pizza, with its simple yet delicious combination of tomato, mozzarella, and basil created in Naples, was originally named after Queen Mag Margarita of Italy. Roman engineering feat. The ancient Romans built an extensive network of roads, the Appian Way, constructed in the year 312 BCE. This is one of the earliest and most strategic roadways. It connected Rome to the southern regions and played a vital role in military and commercial activities. A Renaissance art hub. The Renaissance, the period of cultural and artistic rebirth, flourished in Italy during the 14th to the 17th centuries. Italian cities like Florence and Venice became hubs for renowned artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. Italy's many islands. Italy is surrounded by numerous beautiful islands. Sicily, the largest Mediterranean island, is known for its diverse landscapes, while Sardinia boasts pristine beaches and unique traditions. The Venice Carnival. The Venice Carnival, dating back to the 11th century, is one of the world's oldest and most glamorous festivals. Known for its elaborate masks and costumes, the carnival attracts revelers from around the globe. These fun facts showcase Italy's rich cultural contributions and its status as a global center for art, innovation, and cuisine. Now, as we walk, because Italy is such an exciting and inviting place, let me tell you a little bit about some of the exciting adventures that even local Italians get all excited about as well. These are the top five festivals to attend in Italy. First, the Venice Carnival. This is the Carnevale di Venezia, and it is a world-famous festival celebrated in the enchanting city of Venice. Dating back to the 11th century, the carnival is known for its elaborate masks and costumes. Participants and visitors enjoy a magical atmosphere with masquerade balls, parades, and live performances in the historic streets and canals of Venice. The Siena Palio the Palio di Siena is a historic horse race held twice a year in the medieval city of Siena. Taking place in the iconic Piazza del Campo, the race is a fiercely competitive event between the city's districts. The festivities leading up to the race include colorful parades, traditional pageantry, and a sense of civic pride. The Verona Opera Festival Held in the stunning Roman amphitheater, the Arena di Verona, the Verona Opera Festival is a celebration of classical music and opera. This open-air festival attracts music enthusiasts and opera singers from around the world who gather to enjoy performances of renowned operas and classical works in a unique and historic setting. The L'Aquila Holy Week Processions L'Aquila, a city in the Abruzzo region, hosts solemn and impressive processions during Holy Week. The processions featuring religious statues and participants in traditional attire wind through the streets creating a moving and spiritual experience. The events are a blend of religious devotion, cultural heritage, and community solidarity. The Alba International White Truffle Fair in the Piedmont region, the Alba International White Truffle Fair celebrates the prized white truffle, a rare and highly sought after culinary delicacy. The fair includes truffle markets, food and wine tastings, and cultural events. Visitors have the opportunity to savor the unique flavors of truffles while exploring the picturesque town of Alba. 
These festivals showcase Italy's diverse cultural heritage, from historic traditions and religious celebrations to musical and culinary events that attract visitors from around the globe. Now, as we walk, let me tell you a little bit about the fashion industry in Italy, because we're in such a, an influential place in terms of fashion. Italy has long been hailed as a global leader in the fashion industry, with a rich history deeply intertwined with creativity, craftsmanship, and innovation. The roots of Italy's influence on fashion can be traced back to the Renaissance, a period that saw a resurgence of art and culture. Italian cities like Florence and Venice became hubs of luxury craftsmanship, producing exquisite textiles, leather goods, and accessories. The Medici family, influential patrons of the arts, played a pivotal role in fostering a culture of creativity and opulence, setting the stage for Italy's future prominence in fashion. In the mid-20th century, Italy experienced a fashion renaissance that would forever change the industry, the industry landscape. The emergence of iconic designers such as Gianni Versace, Giorgio Armani, and Valentino Garavani propelled Italian fashion onto the global stage. Milan, Milano, one of the world's fashion capitals, became synonymous with haute couture and high-end design. Italian fashion houses showcased a unique blend of tradition and modernity, emphasizing craftsmanship, quality materials, and attention to detail. The quote made in Italy label became a symbol of excellence associated with luxury, sophistication, and cutting edge style. The global impact of Italian fashion. Italian fashion's influence extends far beyond its borders, however, shaping the global landscape and contributing to the evolution of style. Milan Fashion Week stands as one of the most anticipated events in the international fashion calendar, where designers unveil the latest collections to a captivated audience. Italian luxury brands like Gucci, Prada, and Dolce & Gabbana have become synonymous with prestige and elegance, maintaining a significant presence in luxury markets worldwide. Italian fashion is celebrated for its ability to seamlessly blend tradition with avant-garde design, offering a diverse range of styles that cater to different tastes. From the luxurious craftsmanship of Florence to the sartorial excellence of Milan, Italy continues to be a trendsetter, inspiring fashion enthusiasts, designers, and industry professionals globally. The fusion of artistry, heritage, and modernity in Italian fashion has secured an enduring impact, making Italy an undisputed leader in the ever-evolving world of style. Now, while we explore this beautiful artistic city, let me tell you a little bit about the history of art and literature in the country. Italy has a rich and illustrious history in both art and literature, dating back to ancient times. During the Roman Empire, literature flourished with renowned writers like Virgil, Horace, and Ovid, whose works continue to be studied and admired today. The Renaissance period marked a significant cultural and artistic revival in Italy, with the likes of Dante Alighieri, Francesco Petrarca, and Boccaccio contributing to the development of Italian literature. Dante's Divine Comedy is considered one of the greatest literary works in history, while Petrarca's sonnets influenced the development of the sonnet form in European poetry. In the visual arts, the Renaissance saw the emergence of masters such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael, whose innovative techniques and masterpieces continue to inspire artists worldwide. The Baroque period witnessed further artistic and literary achievements in Italy, with figures like Caravaggio, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, and Galileo Galilei leaving an indelible mark on their respective fields. Italian literature expanded with the works of playwrights like Carlo Goldoni and Giacomo Leopardi, while the Baroque style found expression in architecture, sculpture, and painting.
In the 19th century, Italy experienced a cultural and political awakening known as the Risorgimento, during which writers like Alessandro Manzoni played a crucial role in shaping Italian national identity through literature. Today, Italy remains a vibrant hub of artistic and literary creativity, with contemporary writers, poets, and artists continuing to uphold the country's rich cultural heritage while exploring new forms of expression. In the 20th and 21st centuries, Italian art and literature have continued to evolve and make significant contributions to global culture. The Futurist movement, led by Filippo Tommaso Marinetti and other avant-garde artists, embraced modern technology and celebrated the dynamism of the machine age. Meanwhile, figures like Umberto Eco and Italo Calvino gained international acclaim for their innovative literary works, exploring themes of postmodernism, semiotics, and metafiction. In contemporary Italy, artists and writers continue to grapple with pressing social and political issues while pushing the boundaries of artistic expression. From the provocative installations of Maurizio Cattelan to the poetic prose of Elena Ferrante, Italian creatives explore diverse themes and styles, reflecting the complexities of modern Italian society. Additionally, Italy's rich literary tradition remains a source of inspiration for scholars, writers, and readers worldwide, ensuring that the country's cultural legacy endures for generations to come. Because we're seeing so many beautiful buildings, let me tell you a little bit about the history of architecture in Italy. Italian architecture boasts a rich and diverse history spanning millennia, characterized by ex exquisite craftsmanship, innovation, and influence on global architectural trends. One of the most prominent periods in Italian architecture is the Roman era, of course, during which iconic structures like the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and aqueducts were built, more on this later, showcasing advanced engineering and monumental design. Following the fall of the Roman Empire, Italy experienced periods of architectural revival, including the Renaissance, which saw the rebirth of classical ideas and the creation of masterpieces like the Florence Cathedral and St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, designed by renowned architects such as Brunelleschi and Michelangelo. The Baroque period also left an indelible mark on Italian architecture, with elaborate churches, palaces, and piazzas adorned with intricate details and dramatic form, exemplified by the works of Bernini and Borromini in Rome and Turin. In addition to its historic landmarks, Italy is home to a wealth of architectural treasures from various periods, including medieval castles, Renaissance villas, and modernist structures. Each region of Italy boasts its own architectural style and heritage, reflecting local traditions, materials, and cultural influences. From the romantic canals of Venice to the hilltop towns of Tuscany and the bustling streets of Milan, Italian architecture continues to captivate visitors with its beauty, diversity, and timeless elegance, serving as a testament to the country's rich cultural heritage and enduring legacy in the world of design and construction. In the 20th and 21st centuries, Italian architecture has continued to evolve, embracing modernist and contemporary trends while preserving its historical legacy. Renowned architects such as Renzo Piano, Massimiliano Fuxas, and Zaha Hadid have made significant contribu contributions to the Italian architectural landscape, creating iconic structures like the Fiat Lingotto factory in Turin, the Maxi Museum in Rome, and the City Life Complex in Milan. These innovative designs blend cutting-edge technology with a respect for tradition, showcasing Italy's ongoing commitment to architectural excellence and urban development. Moreover, Italy's architectural heritage extends beyond its buildings to include its urban planning, public spaces, and cultural landscapes. Cities like Florence, Venice, and Rome are renowned for their harmonious cityscapes, where historic landmarks seamlessly blend with contemporary life. The preservation of Italy's architectural heritage is not only a source of pride for Italians, but also a testament to the country's commitment to sustainable development and cultural stewardship. As Italy continues to navigate the challenges of the modern world, its architectural legacy remains a source of inspiration and admiration for people around the globe, reflecting the timeless beauty and enduring significance of Italian design and craftsmanship. 
As we walk, we are seeing some beautiful religious buildings. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of religion in Italy. Religion has deeply influenced the history of Italy, with the country being home to the seat of the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican City, the smallest independent state in the world. Italy's religious history dates back to ancient times, when various civilizations worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses, including the Etruscans, the Greeks, and the Romans. With the spread of Christianity in the Roman Empire, Italy became a significant center for the faith, with early Christian communities forming in cities like Rome, Naples, and Milan. The conversion of Emperor Constantine to Christianity in the 4th century marked a pivotal moment in Italy's religious landscape, leading to the legalization and eventual adoption of Christianity as the legal religion of the Roman Empire. During the Middle Ages, Italy played a central role in the Christian world, serving as the seat of the papacy and the birth of the Renaissance, a cultural movement that saw a renewed interest in classical learning, art, and architecture. The church wielded considerable power and influence over all aspects of Italian society, shaping political, social, and cultural developments. The religious fervor of the time led to the construction of magnificent cathedrals, monasteries, and churches across Italy, many of which still stand as architectural marvels today. Despite periods of conflict and division within the church, Italy remained a stronghold of Catholicism, and the papacy continued to exert its authority over spiritual matters, leaving an indelible mark on the country's history and identity. Italy has also been home to a vibrant Jewish community with a rich and diverse history dating back over two millennia. Jewish people settled in Italy during ancient times with evidence of their presence found in inscriptions and archaeological remains dating as far back as the Roman Republic. The Jewish community flourished in Italy during the Middle Ages, particularly during the period of Norman rule in the southern Italy and the Renaissance in the north. Italian Jewish people made significant contributions to various fields, including medicine, finance, and the arts, and enjoyed periods of relative tolerance and prosperity. However, Jewish folks in Italy also faced many periods of persecution and discrimination, particularly during the Spanish Inquisition and under the rule of the Papal States. Expulsions, forced conversions, and the imposition of restrictive laws characterized these darker chapters in Italian Jewish history. Despite these challenges, Jewish communities persisted and continued to contribute to Italian society. Today, Italy is home to a diverse Jewish population with vibrant communities in cities like Rome, Milan, and Venice. Synagogues, Jewish museums, and cultural centers stand as testament to the enduring legacy of Italian Jewish communities, reflecting a history of resilience, cultural exchange, and coexistence in the heart of the Mediterranean. In contemporary life, religious observance varies widely among the population, reflecting a diverse landscape of beliefs and practices. While Italy has a rich Catholic heritage and is home to the Vatican City, the center of the Catholic Church, the influence of religion in daily life has waned in recent decades. Modern Italy embraces secularism and pluralism, with many Italians identifying as non-religious or having a nominal affiliation with Catholicism. However, Catholic traditions and rituals still hold significance for a considerable portion of the population, particularly in rural areas or small towns where religious festivals and processions remain integral to community life. Additionally, Italy's immigrant communities have brought diverse religious practices, including Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism, adding to the country's religious landscape and fostering interfaith dialogue and cultural exchange. Overall, while religion continues to play a role in Italian society, its influence is evolving alongside broader social and cultural changes in the country. Now, because we're in such a delightful place, one of the main things to do is, of course, sit at a cafe or a restaurant and have a glass of wine. However, 
the history of wine does not stop with just tourists. It began a very, very long time ago. Italy has a rich and storied history deeply intertwined with winemaking dating back thousands of years, way before the tourists like you and me. Let me tell you a little bit about them as we walk. The origins of Italian viticulture can be traced back to ancient civilizations such as the Etruscans and the Greeks who cultivated grapevines on the Italian peninsula. The art of winemaking flourished during the Roman Empire, where wine became an integral part of daily life and was associated with so social, religious, and economic significance. Romans developed advanced techniques in vineyard management and wine production, leaving a lasting legacy that laid the foundation for Italy's prominence in the global wine industry. Italy is renowned for its diverse wine regions, each with its own unique terroir, grape varieties, and wine-making traditions. From the iconic Chianti in Tuscany to the exquisite Barolo di Piedmont, Italian wines are celebrated for their exceptional quality and variety. The country is home to numerous indigenous grape varieties as well, such as the Sangiovese, Nebbiolo, and Barbera, contributing to its distinct character of Italian wines. Wine has become an integral part of Italian culture, with meals often accompanied by local wines that complement the regional cuisine. The importance of wine extends beyond gastronomy, playing a crucial role in cultural celebrations, family gatherings, and everyday life, making it an enduring symbol of Italy's rich heritage. What's your favorite Italian wine? Let me know in the comments below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let me give you a little bit of history about opera and specifically in relation to Italy. Italy holds a special place in the history and development of opera, serving as its birthplace and a constant source of inspiration. The origins of opera can be traced back to the 16th century in Florence, where a group of intellectuals and musicians known as the Camerata sought to revive the dramatic traditions of ancient Greece. This artistic circle, led by figures like Jacopo Peri and Giulio Caccini, aimed to create a new form of musical drama that combined poetry and music. The result was the first recognized opera, Jacopo Peri's Daphne, which premiered in 1598. Subsequently, Claudio Monteverdi's groundbreaking work Orfeo from 1607 further solidified opera as a distinct art form. Italian cities such as Venice, Milan, and Naples played crucial roles in the early development of and popularization of opera. This genre quickly spread across Florence, captivating audiences with its unique synthesis of music and storytelling. The 17th century witnessed the flourishing of opera in Italy with composers like Monteverdi, Alessandro Scarlatti, and Antonio Vivaldi contributing to its growth. Opera seria, characterized by serious and heroic themes, became a dominant form while the comic opera buffa also gained popularity. The unique structure of Italian opera houses with their horseshoe-shaped auditoriums and ornate decorations further enhanced the immersive experience for spectators. Italian opera continued to evolve during the Baroque and Classical periods, reaching its zenith with composers like Mozart, Rossini, and Verdi in the 18th and 19th centuries. Verdi in particular became a towering figure in the history of Italian opera, composing masterpieces such as La Traviata, Rigoletto, and Aida. The Italian operatic tradition has left an indelible mark on the global cultural landscape, influencing composers, perform performers, and audiences worldwide. Today, Italy remains a vibrant hub for opera, with its historic theaters, festivals, and ongoing commitment to preserving and innovating within this cherished art form. While we are seeing all of these beautiful things, let me give you a little bit of history about ancient Rome. Ancient Rome stands as one of the most influential civilizations in history, shaping the foundations of Western culture, governance, and law.
Its origins can be traced back to the early settlement of Rome along the banks of the Tiber River in the 8th century BCE. Over time, Rome transitioned from a monarchy to a republic around 509 BCE, marking the, be the beginning of a political system where citizens played a role in decision-making through elected representatives. The Roman Republic extended its territory through military conquests, assimilating various cultures into the growing Roman domain. However, it was the transition from the Roman Republic to the Roman Empire in the first century BCE that marked a significant turning point. The rise of powerful leaders like Julius Caesar, Augustus or Octavian, and subsequent emperors transformed Rome into a formidable imperial force. The Pax Romana, Roman peace, a period of relative stability and prosperity, characterized the first two centuries of the Roman Empire. Rome's extensive road network, engineering marvels such as the Colosseum and aqueducts, and the codification of Roman law all contributed to the empire's lasting impact on civilization. The legacy of ancient Rome extends far beyond its architectural achievements, however. Roman law, known for its emphasis on justice and equal treatment, became the basis for legal systems in many modern societies. The Latin language spoken by the Romans evolved into the Romance languages such as Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Romanian. Roman contributions to literature, philosophy, engineering, and governance continue to shape contemporary thought and institutions. The fall of the Western Roman Empire in the year 476 marked the end of an era, yet the enduring influence of ancient Rome persists, making it a pivotal chapter in the annals of human history. Let me tell you a little bit about what it was like to be a man, a woman, or a child in ancient Rome. Life in ancient Rome varied significantly based on one's social status, gender, and age. A glimpse into the experiences of a Roman man. Roman men held the highest societal status and enjoyed privileges in both public and private life. They were expected to fulfill civic duties, participate in political activities, and provide financial support for their families. Many pursued careers in the military, politics, or commerce. Leisure activities included attending public baths, socializing at banquets, and enjoying events at the Colosseum. A Roman man's societal standing was often determined by his ancestry, wealth, and political connections. Life was much different for a Roman woman, however. Roman women had distinct roles within the household and were primarily responsible for managing domestic affairs. Their status and freedoms, however, were limited compared to men. Upper-class women were often well-educated and could engage in cultural activities, but their public roles were very restricted. Marriage and motherhood were highly valued, and women from all classes were expected to bear children. Modesty and loyalty were prized virtues. While some women had influence within their families, they lacked legal and political rights. As a child growing up in ancient Rome, it is oddly similar to what we see as children today. Childhood in ancient Rome was a stage of dependency and learning. Roman children, regardless of their status, were taught moral values, household skills, and for boys, the basics of reading and writing. Education varied based on social class, with wealthier families affording private tutors. Boys underwent a rite of passage called the toga virilis around the age of 14, marking their entry into adulthood. Girls were considered adults after their initiation into religious ceremonies. Play included games, dolls, and pets. The well-being and future success of a Roman child often depended on their family's social standing and resources. In essence, the life in ancient Rome was intricately woven into the fabric of societal norms, where individuals' roles were defined by their gender, social class, and age. I hope you brought a snack, because now I have some interesting facts for you about olives. Olive oil production dates back to ancient civilizations, such as the Greeks and the Romans. They used stone mills to crush olives and press the oil. Olive trees are known for their longevity. Some olive trees are believed to be thousands of years old, with one of the oldest olive trees being the olive tree of Vauve in Crete, estimated to be over 2,000 years old. 
In ancient times, olives were often crushed using large stone or wooden presses. Today, modern equipment, such as the hydraulic presses and centrifuges, are often used for extraction. Olive oil comes in various grades, including extra virgin, virgin, and refined. Extra virgin olive oil is the highest quality and is cold pressed without heat or chemicals. It tastes the best and it's the best for you. The timing of olive oil harvest is crucial. Olives are typically harvested in the late fall to early winter when they are at their ripest. Traditionally, olives were hand-picked from trees, but today, modern farmers use mechanical shakers to harvest olives more efficiently. Olive oil is produced in many countries, with Spain, Italy, and Greece being some of the largest producers. Each region has its own unique olive varieties and flavors. Like wine, olive oil can have various flavor profiles, depending on the type of olives used and the region of production. Tasting notes might include fruity, peppery, or grassy. Olive oil holds cultural significance in Mediterranean cuisine and beyond. It's a staple ingredient in dishes like salads, pastas, and other Mediterranean dishes. Olive branches and olive oil have been symbols of peace, prosperity, and victory in various cultures throughout history. Last but not least, some regions with a strong olive oil tradition like Tuscany and Italy have museums dedicated to the history and production of olive oil. Olive oil's journey from ancient times to modern day kitchens showcases its enduring popularity, versatility, and its role in both culinary traditions and health conscious lifestyles. As we walk, let me tell you a little bit about the tradition of eating octopus in Italy. It has deep roots here, and this tradition of consuming octopus in Italy is intertwined with the rich culinary heritage of these coastal regions. Italians have mastered the art of transforming this octopus into delectable dishes that showcase its unique texture and flavor. Octopus is often prepared in various ways, including grilling, stewing, or featuring prominently in seafood salads. The intricate balance of herbs, olive oil, and regional spices enhances the natural taste of octopus, creating dishes that have become staples of Italian coastal cuisine. However, modern scientific perspectives on octopus consumption have raised some concerns. Octopi are known to be highly intelligent and sentient beings, possessing complex nervous systems, so much so that they now require a numbing liquid when go undergoing surgery, the same that is given to humans. Ethical considerations and animal welfare concerns have prompted discussions about the moral implications of consuming octopus. Some argue that the cognitive abilities of these creatures should be taken into account, leading to a re-evaluation of the ethical dimensions of consuming such intelligent marine life. As our understanding of animal intelligence and consciousness deepens, it prompts ongoing debates about the ethical choices we make regarding the food we consume and how much they can feel when they become that food. Ugh. What to eat in Italy instead, maybe? if I may offer a few suggestions. So Italy boasts a diverse and delectable culinary landscape beyond octopus, offering a myriad of options for those looking to explore different flavors. Some traditional Italian dishes that showcase the country's culinary excellence include pizza. Indulge in the iconic Italian pizza with its thin, crispy crust and a variety of toppings. Each region has its own unique spin on this classic dish, all of which are delicious. Pasta. Italy is renowned for its pasta, and you can enjoy a wide array of pasta shapes and sauces. Try classics like spaghetti bolognese, fettuccine alfredo, or penne all'arrabbiata. Risotto. Savor the creamy goodness of risotto, a comforting dish made with arborio rice cooked to perfection and often combined with flavorful ingredients like saffron or mushrooms. Gelato. Treat yourself to the velvety smoothness of Italian gelato, available in an assortment of flavors. It's a delightful way to satisfy your sweet tooth. 
Last but not least, tiramisu. End your meal on a sweet note with tiramisu, a heavenly dessert made with layers of coffee-soaked ladyfingers and mascarpone cheese. Exploring these dishes will provide a delightful culinary journey through Italy's diverse and flavorful gastronomy. What's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what relaxation looks like in this location. Oftentimes, it includes a cup of coffee. The history of coffee is quite interesting, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Coffee's journey began in ancient coffee forests of Ethiopia, where legend has it that a 9th century goat herder named Kaldi discovered the energizing effects of the coffee beans after noticing his goats became more lively after eating them. The knowledge of these magical beans eventually spread to Arabian traders, who brought coffee back to their homeland. By the 15th century, coffee was being grown in the Yemeni district of Arabia, and the first coffee houses, called Kave Kane, emerged. These establishments became cultural hubs where patrons engaged in conversation, enjoyed music, and experienced the stimulating effects of coffee. Now, the importance of coffee we should also talk about. Over the centuries, coffee has evolved from a regional beverage to a global phenomenon, becoming one of the most traded commodities in the world. Its significance goes beyond a mere beverage. Coffee has played a crucial role in shaping societies, fostering intellectual discussions, and fueling innovation. Coffee houses in the 17th and 18th centuries became known as penny universities, as patrons could engage in intellectual exchanges for the price of a cup of coffee, which could just be a few pennies. The drink's popularity surged during the Age of Enlightenment, contributing to the formation of ideas and discussions that would influence the course of history. In the modern era, Coffee has become an integral part of daily life for millions, especially within coffee shops themselves, brewing methods and artisanal blends that add a new layer to the experiences. Coffee continues to be a symbol of social interaction, a catalyst for creativity, and a source of comfort for people around the world. The global coffee culture reflects not only the diverse flavors and aromas of the beans, but also the shared moments and connections it fosters among individuals of different cultures and backgrounds. In the context of European culture, coffee has left an indelible mark, shaping social dynamics, intellectual pursuits, and even influencing artistic expression. The advent of coffee houses in Europe during the 17th century transformed them into vibrant centers of social activity and intellectual discourse. Cities like Vienna, Paris, and London saw the rise of coffee house culture attracting thinkers, writers, and artists. These establishments became known as places where individuals could engage in spirited conversations, exchange ideas, and participate in the vibrant tapestry of cultural life. The European Enlightenment, an intellectual movement of the 18th century, found a fertile ground in coffee houses, where philosophers, writers, and scientists gathered to discuss new ideas. The emergence of coffee in Europe not only fueled the caffeinated conversations of the intelligentsia, but also became intertwined with the continent's cultural rituals. Beyond the intellectual sphere, coffee became a symbol of refinement and sophistication. European cafes with their elegant ambiance offered a sanctuary for people to enjoy coffee in a more leisurely manner. The European coffee culture expanded with the popularity of espresso, cappuccino, and other specialty coffee drinks, each contributing to the rich mosaic of coffee traditions across the continent. Today, Europe continues to embrace coffee as a cultural cornerstone, with the café serving as a haven for socializing, artistic expression, and the enjoyment of a good cup of coffee. As we walk, I usually get hungry, so, let me tell you a little bit about my favorite food in Italy. Can you guess? It's pizza. 
<laughs> the history of pizza is a fascinating journey that began in ancient times and evolved into one of the world's most beloved and iconic dishes. Tracing its roots back to ancient civilizations, flatbreads with various toppings were consumed by Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. However, it was in Naples during the 18th century that the modern pizza as we know it began to take shape. The poor of Naples created a simple, affordable dish by adding tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, and other local ingredients to flatbread, leading to the, ver the birth of the Neapolitan pizza. With the opening of the first pizzeria, Antica Pizzeria Portalba, in Naples in 1830, which is still open today, by the way, pizza gained popularity, and it soon became a symbol of Italian culinary culture. Pizza's global journey began in the 19th and early 20th centuries, when Italian immigrants bought, brought this delectable dish to the United States and other parts of the world. Today, pizza is a ubiquitous and versatile culinary delight, enjoyed in countless variations worldwide. Its importance extends beyond a mere food item, becoming a cultural phenomenon that brings people together. Pizza represents creativity, with each region and country putting its unique twist on the classic. It has become a symbol of sharing, celebration, and comfort, and its worldwide popularity reflects the universal love for this delectable creation that transcends borders and cultures. Now, let me know in the comments below what your favorite pizza is and if you have an opinion on pineapple on your pizza. <laughs> As we conclude our first journey through Pisa's captivating history, we find ourselves immersed in a city that has stood the test of time, leaving an indelible mark on Italy's cultural tapestry. From the architectural marvels of the Leaning Tower to the rich heritage woven into the streets of Pisa, the city's past unfolds as a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. As travelers depart from Pisa's enchanting landscapes and historic sites, they carry with them the echoes of centuries gone by, a reminder of the enduring allure that this iconic city holds in the annals of Italy's storied past. For a more in-depth look at this location, as well as over a hundred locations around the world, check out my Explore with Kelsey tours in the Buy Me a Coffee links in the information below this video. Happy travels! Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for your donations, for your tips, for your PayPal's. And as always, thank you for being a part of my traveling family. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everyone. Don't forget to follow and like this video for more with me, Explore with Kelsey.